tell us a little bit about what you're doing here and uh, who you are and what's going on. Okay, well we're building bike racks that are going to go up and around Austin. Um, we're doing steel fabrication, so we have a little steel metal shop here with like some iron worker hole punching and some, some metal bending, metal cutting and some welding. And after we put all that stuff together, we make these kind of art, artsy uh, bike racks that we're going to put up in the city. Fun! Yeah. Okay, so you want, you want the spiel? You want a welding lesson? Yes, please. Should I be nervous? No. It's fun? Oh, yeah. I've never welded you before. Are. Don't you worry about it. Welding though, it looks a little bit like it's like a hot glue gun or something. It's not. Okay. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I would think of it as hot okay. glue. As someone who uses hot glue right. frequently, it's well, much it scarier. Like I mean, this is kind of the gun. It looks like, you know. I guess. The idea is that you got two pieces of steel and you want them to stick together. Right. But you're not going to make them stick at all. What you're going to do is you're going to melt the edges of both of them, okay. and then you're going to drop a third metal in between, almost like uh, almost like you're, you're sewing, okay? Okay. And then you're actually melting it all together, so that when you have a good weld, all right, it all acts like it's one piece of steel, all right? So when you go to break it, you can't break it. It's not like they're two independent pieces. They're actually all melted and fused together. That's why it's so strong. Okay. All right, now the only way you can get steel that hot, well, I guess there's a lot of ways, but one of the ways that you do it with an arc welder is you create uh, an electrical loop, all right? Okay. So one side of the loop is right here, okay? Looks dangerous. <laughs> we do it through the table, all right? So that means okay. that the whole loop passes also through this table, all right? Okay. Now, there's no electricity flowing through right now, don't worry about it. Okay. All right, now the other side, of that loop is right here in this tip, okay? So, properties of electricity is when you are close to closing a loop. Much like when you have two magnets and they get really close like this, they just move by themselves. Uh -huh. yeah, electricity wants to do the same thing. So when you get close like this, electricity actually wants to jump from this end to this end to close the loop. Okay. And it leaves it kind of raw. It looks like a lightning bolt, you know? So you use that power of the lightning bolt to melt the steel. Okay. All right, so what you do is you keep a consistent distance from where you want to weld, all right, so that if you pull back here, then it's too far to jump. If you get too close, you kind of snuff it. Okay. All right? Equal distance. Equal distance. Okay. And you, I, I usually like to use a figure eight method, but it's easier to teach, uh, like, probably like a C or a zigzag method. Okay. What I usually like to do is like an air weld first. Okay. Uh, like air guitar, but it's with welding. So I just kind of, you know, lip sync it. All right, and I just sort of watch myself move here, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go in that one. Maybe I gotta, you know, just how far down I gotta move, just so that my hands feel comfortable with it. I also like to use this hand kind of like I'm playing pool. Okay. You know, I use it kind of as a bridge. Right, right. So I use this hand in a lot of different ways to stabilize. Sometimes I gotta cut it in, I gotta go this thing right there. But okay. because you wanna keep that consistent distance, you mm -hmm. use this hand to help do that. And then okay. you do a lot of the motion actually with this arm. Mm -hmm. And this one just kind of slides and embraces it. Doctor, that makes sense. I got it. Yeah, steady hands is Doctor. more the key than anything else. All right. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Helmets are auto darkening. Do you have like a grandparent or something that has like those regular glasses inside, and they go outside and turn yeah, into the cool transition, sunglasses? Transition change. Transition lenses. These are like totally. transition lenses, like on steroids. So they go from being green right. to being black. Oh, perfect. Right? The reason why they go to being black is because literally you're like looking at the sun. Yeah. Okay, so this blocks out everything else, and then you can only see the spark. Don't look at the spark per se, look at the glow around the spark. Okay. If you look at the spark that you can't see in the metal, if you look at the glow, you can see like a little radius of where you're going. Okay. But it is dark. Okay. So expect it to be dark. It's not easy to see. Okay. All right, this is my air weld. All right, the spark. Your bridge, much right, like the pool. Right. All right. So come on in here. Okay. Come on in. Come in a little, little bit of an angle. Okay. Ah, that's gonna okay. be good. Okay. Now your bridge, you feel comfortable, and do an air well. Just, 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 just trace your steps 
on there. You little seeds, little seeds. Yeah. Like yeah. that? Yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like how you're gonna be a pro. Alright, I'm gonna be right behind you. Don't feel bad if I come jumping in or a little bit, alright? Or I'll, I'll come on this side. Put your hat down. Yeah, Will you, you put, put my hat down so I don't have to move? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, ready? Spark! Chessboro came up with the idea and labeled it Open Innovation. What he was really trying to do is to basically say the world is moving too fast, there's so much technological velocity that, that you just can't keep up and you need to be able to open yourselves up to outsiders to help you solve the major problems. How can the world afford not to innovate? As part of the global community, we must push the boundaries to be able to come up with these solutions. Innovation is not just having an idea. It's about turning that idea into reality. It's not just about the process. It's knowing how to mitigate risks along the way. It's really about developing a certainty about something, knowledge about something, so that you can reduce risks. And not just knowing where the path leads, but where the path ends. Our job as problem solvers is to reduce the risk and you do that by reducing uncertainty. Having a diverse set of experts in-house is critical. That's why we have microbiology, uh, analytical chemistry, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, physics. By having all these viewpoints, we are able to spot the things, the information, the needs, the gaps in that to be able to, um, to, be able to solve the problem. That's what we do here at PCD. We create, we test, we build, we refine, we deliver. Finding the answers is in our DNA. Seeking out the best, less risky, most certain solution is what we do. We make the impossible possible and it works. PCD works.